Yo guys, I'm going over a dividend stock that I'm actually committed to never selling for the rest of my life, where I want you guys to hold me accountable, hit the subscribe button and come back to my channel in a year or two years or something. I promise you I will never sell this dividend stock. And I'm actually going over two dividend stocks I'm committed to never selling. And the first one's a little more exciting because they do a lot of special dividends and they do share buybacks. Like I've never seen a company like this. And it's, again, I might be a little biased because I own the company, you know, not personalized advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell anything, but this company actually has a rule that they gave in their investor uh, relations that 60% of all the free cash flow that they make, they will return to the shareholder either through special dividends or share buybacks. So let that sink in for a second. Here's their free cash flow right here. It was $1.22 billion. They are returning at minimum 60% of this to you, either through special dividends or share buybacks. So we're about to see in a second, they have a huge history of special dividends and share buybacks. And here's their dividend stats right now. So their normal dividend, when you exclude the special dividends, their yield is a 2.83%. So that's a pretty good yield. And as you can see, if we go to their dividend history, you can see the special dividends like $1.50, $1, $1.50. But most recently, they've started doing a ton of share buybacks, which I'll show you really shortly. So remember, look at the free cash flow that they made. They made $1.22 billion of free cash flow in the most recent quarter. But let's look at their net income. They made $1.69 billion of net income in the most recent quarter. So let's see how much their dividend cost them. So their dividend only cost them $520 million. And if you look, it's from the previous quarter, it cost $5 million or less because of the share buybacks. So whenever they buy back their own shares, you know, they don't have to pay dividends to those shares. But also look at this. If you're wondering, why does it say $1.3 billion? And if we look back here, that's whenever they do the special dividends. So if we look back here, they used to do special dividends every single quarter. But if they haven't done them in the most recent quarters because they've been spending a ton of money buying back their own shares. So look at this. They've spent over a billion dollars just in the past two quarters on share buyback. So the market cap on this company is $71 billion. So they've bought back, let's actually see that should be like two point something percent. So they bought back over 2.2% of the entire company just in the past year. So you not only get the 3% dividend, you also get the 2.2% return through share buybacks, which is insane. And on top of that, look at this. They have $5.43 billion in cash even after doing the share buybacks. So remember, $5 billion in cash, and look at the total debt, $3.79 billion, and they just paid off a bunch of debt. So they have way more cash than debt right now, super healthy, and here's their free cash flow per share. So this is even way better than their diluted normalized DPS because they make a ton of free cash flow, but it was $5.07 in the most recent quarter, dividend cost 91 cents. So that's what I'm saying. This company has a ton of room to organically raise the dividend and do shit. They have so much free cash flow. They can do sh special dividends and share buybacks, whatever they want. So that's what I love. Companies that make a ton of free cash flow. And just in case y'all don't believe me, here's EOG Resources' most recent investor presentation. And here's what I actually got wrong. So they actually said they are committed to return a minimum of 70% of annual free cash flow. So that's what's like that's just mind blowing. That's what I love about this company. And uh, if we go right here, this is another crazy thing. They have super premium drilling, they say. So this is the oil price, the price per barrel or whatever required for a 10% return on capital employed. And look how it's gone down over time. So the price per barrel can drop and they will still make a lot of money still and we can see that the cumulative free cash flow and this is as a 2023 we know in 2024 they're still cranking out free cash flow but it was 24 billion dollars and that's why they can do these crazy share buybacks and special dividends like look at this this is the q2 results they did 0.7 billion uh, of share repurchases and half a billion in regular dividends so soon they could have instead done special dividends but they chose to do share buybacks because the stock was kind of going down i guess and we could see their adjusted eps versus their adjusted free cash flow per share you know just insane i love this so yeah, if you're someone that loves dividends, I mean, this company definitely has an impressive history of growing their regular dividend. They said 26 years of stable growing regular dividends. So that means they are a dividend aristocrat, right? I'm pretty sure. 
I guess we can uh, double check that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the next dividend stock because this was EOG Resources. Let me know what your thoughts on them are in the comments. All right, so the next dividend stock I've committed to never selling for the rest of my life is actually ticker symbol Cube or Cube Smart. We own 25 shares of them right now. And it's really the past two months that this stock has just gone straight up. And that's because, you know, Jerome Powell basically came in and guaranteed rate cuts. You can see my cost base is down here. It's around 40 bucks per share. But here's why I love this company. They're actually a REIT or a real estate investment trust. So they have to pay out 90% of their taxable income in the form of dividends by law. So they have these abnormally high dividend yields, but it's totally sustainable. But they are taxed a little bit differently. They're taxed as interest instead of a qualified dividend. So that's another thing you need to keep aware of. But you don't actually look at net income for REITs. You actually look at the net income plus the depreciation and the amortization. And that is this number right here. Sorry if this is a little confusing. I just like to show you the real numbers. So basically, this is the number we want to look at. $170 million in the most recent quarter, and it was up 5.95% year over year. So very impressive growth so, uh, in, you know, in today's environment. So $170 million, and their dividend only cost $115 million from this. So that is a very safe and sustainable dividend payout ratio because they have to pay out most of their income in the form of dividends or else they're taxed on it, which is no big deal. But look at this. You have not been diluted with this company or you've literally been diluted 0.15% year over year, which is literally nothing. So that's why I love this company. They're not diluting you that much. They're growing their their AFFO and they have a, a very good dividend. So that's why I love. If we actually look at the stock price on this, we zoom out. They're actually at all time highs on the dividend reinvested chart. So look at this, literally all time highs. So not only are you getting a high yield with this company, you're also getting a lot of stock price appreciation. And that's why I'm never selling this company. And I actually want to take you through their most recent investor presentation because I want to talk to you about the self-storage industry and why it's so attractive. And like, why is this re at all time highs? Because that's actually crazy. It's just, it's the boring and stupid, simple stuff that make a ton of money. So let me now take you through their most recent investor presentation because this company is super impressive. They have a very strong track record. They have a credit rating from S&P Global and Moody's, Triple B, so there's a lot of safety in that. They have a total of nearly 1,500 properties, which is great. Five-year total shareholder return of 52% and a five-year dividend growth of 62%. So just very impressive numbers all around the board. Oh yeah, and here's the attractive industry. Why is self-storage such an attractive industry? Low expense and low CapEx requirements. And also on top of that, here's what a lot of people overlook, the short term leases. So month to month leases allow you to capture inflation. So let's say inflation does come back and you know it probably will one day. And let's say it happens rapidly like it did in 2020. They can capture it that month or, you know, the month to month lease allows them to easily capture the inflation where they, these other long super triple net lease leases you know that take 10 years to renew they can't really capture the inflation the inflation might go away by that time uh and here's their diversified portfolio so that's another cool thing about the industry is, is that they're month to month lease oh yeah so here's why cube smart is my favorite self-storage reach so here's the average three mile median household income so this is very important cube smart has the highest one nsa actually has the lowest one in so they have the highest, you know, very, it's still very close to PSA, but here's why they're super impressive. Look at the average three mile population density. It's nearly double all their competitors. So there's a ton. So they're going in the markets where there's a ton of people and that's where you're not, you know, you're most likely needing self storage. They're actually very, uh, they're actually very exposed to the New York. We can see right here over 15% of their portfolio is Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, other New York, Long Island. So they have a heavy concentration in New York. So that's why their average three mile population density is way, way higher than their competitors. So that's what I love about them. And also look at this. They have class A properties on the outer boroughs that create vibrant billboards for our brand. So imagine driving past this building right here. It's very beautiful and it definitely acts as a billboard because it's very nice. And check this out. So since they're in New York, look at this. They have the lowest supplied market. So the supply across our three outer boroughs is 2.6 square feet per capita. The lowest nationally. So that's just crazy. And less than half the national average of 6.3 square feet per capita. So that's why. Oh, and another thing. So look at this. Supply pipeline is waning. So 
new competition is going away because of new changes that remove self-storage eligibility for the ICAP tax incentive program. So now in New York, the self-storage properties used to qualify for this tax incentive. Now they don't. So the new competition isn't really coming. So the ones that were dominating the New York market are staying in the New York market. You know, I wonder if they were talking to Wall Street. You know, this company is headquartered in, in New York. I wonder if they had some friends, uh, you know, down the street at Wall Street asking for that, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, actually, I'm not making any claims. This is all just for fun. But I appreciate all y'all being here. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. Oh, yeah, there's a, another couple more important things we can look at, you know, ro robust portfolio growth. So look at this. Look at the managed store. So the managed store you know, in 2019, it was, you know, just over a thousand in the most recent quarter they, they keep going up on their management, um, stores. And we can see that their wholly owned stores are staying pretty, pretty consistent. They're definitely not selling any of their high quality assets, but I want to show you that whenever they're managing these properties, look at this, they get management fees. So they get $37 million in management fee income every single year of these 860 properties, which is crazy good. Oh yeah, and since we're looking at REITs, we wanna look at their debt. We can see that their net debt to EBITDA is 4.1X. So that's very safe. Realty incomes is over a five. Um, you know, Not that that's a fair comparison. They're a triple net lease, REIT with more predictable income. But look at this, this this is what's really important. They're, they're rated from uh, S&P Global and Moody's, triple B. So that's what's super impressive about this company. But yeah, they have, access to proven capital all this is what all they've done they've raised 6.4 billion dollars of capital since 2010 through all these different forms of way common equity senior secured loans credit facility all that so anyway thank you guys so much for watching my name is nathan robert don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like this kind of content and if you leave a comment i will respond to every single one of them but i'll see you guys in the next video